How's it going, ladies and bruises? I'm Bobby Six Killer, and welcome to a new series we're going to be doing on a game called Necro Barista. Now, I'm sure many of you have already heard of this game. It got a bit of notoriety, I think, when it first came out, probably because of its very striking art style. Now, it's a visual novel, and we haven't had a visual novel on the channel since Blank Space ended, so it's been a bit weird. So, it's definitely a good time to jump back in. Um, it also comes from my homeland, Australia, where I'm actually from. So, uh, I guess I should be supporting developers there and all that. Actually, I'm just, I, I don't really care where you're from. I'm just, I want to support indie developers in general. But uh, let's just jump in, shall we, and see what it's all about. It is a beautiful game, if nothing else. They thought of the faraway grave on the plain. They thought of the comrade who came, not again. They lifted their glasses and sadly they said, yeah. We drink to the name of the mate who was dead, Henry Lawson. <clears throat> <clears throat> it's so bloody damp down here. I know we're in a cellar. Well, I don't suppose you have a window we can open or anything. Yeah, we got a vent that leads outside somewhere. Maddie, can you open it up? Get some fresh air coming through? I'm pretty sure it's got a dumpster or something sitting on top of it right now. Besides, I'm busy. Just grin and bear it. Hmm. I'm not sure if there are puzzles involved in this game either. Like the ones that we've been used to. Can we get this over with? We've done this before, old man. You know it takes a while to set up. Calm your farm. I do not appreciate your tone. Sorry. Can we get some more lights on, maybe? With all the crap you got scattered around the place, I'd like to at least know where I'm putting my feet. Ashley, would you mind? Thanks. Yeah. Exactly. You're more organized than last time I seen. <sighs> Practice makes perfect. Hey Maddie, how much more wire do we need? I think that's enough. Great. Now, Shay? Or Shay? Let's go with Shay. What's up, little P? I found you found you a chair. Ah, oh, thank you. So this whole thing. Surely it's not legal, yeah? Maddie wasn't clear on that. Yes, the council found it confronting. For good reason, I suppose. Because it utterly upsets the natural order? Mate, it's not just bureaucracy. Shush you. Most rules can be bent, after all. <sighs> and Maddie has a particular fascination with breaking rules. As I'm sure you've realized. Hey, don't give her all the credit. Bah. Is this related to her gambling for time? Mm-hmm. So, the transfer. It was the same sort of magic we're doing now, yes. Small scale, though. Doing it on a larger scale requires a bit more, requires a bit more preparation. The council successfully suppressed all available information about it, though. For good reason. What happens if something goes wrong? Well... You don't tend to mess it up more than once. Or try again after you fail, for that matter. Stubborn scholars notwithstanding. What do you even call this sort of magic, then? Questions are relevant. Because it's banned. Badass? I call it badass. Well, by definition, it's a conduit ritual. But, looking past all the smoke and mirrors and fancy names, you can just call it... Necromancy. Still a fancy name. Still sounds badass too. Who hasn't wanted to be a necromancer? <laughs> Who hasn't wanted skeletons to do their bidding? I know I have. They could have made me breakfast. Make me breakfast, minions. From your hazy memories, a certain word calls out to you. Necromancy. You tried desperately to remember what it meant.
This fragment of a memory stays with you. Piece together the past. Remember what transpired. And never forget. You. Are. Scattered. Practice. Fascination. Disheveled. Bureaucracy. Band. Amateur. Oh, no. <laughs> That's too many words. Too many syllables for me to handle. My poor little brain. I'll tell you what, these loading times are quite bad. I'm going to artificially shorten them. Um, so, don't assume that the loading times are as good as they look, because they're not. They're quite long. But I will artificially shorten them. For the sake of expediency. Okie dokie. Hokey smokey. What do we got? Terminal house rules. Maddie's rules. One, we welcome both living and dead. Patrons will be served in the order that... Ah. Interesting. The order they arrived. Two, don't ask who's alive. If someone tells you to know, they'll tell you. If someone wants you to know, they'll tell you. Three, the dead have 24 hours. Strictly enforced. 24 hours and 5 minutes is not 24 hours. Four. No, we don't have Wi-Fi. <laughs> yes, there's no cell reception. Ether and radio signals do, don't do play nice together. Five. Report broken items and other anomalies to staff. We can't clean up your broken glass or spatial rift if we don't know about it. Six. Don't feed the Eidolons. They can't eat and offering them food just reminds them of that cruel fact. <laughs> I like it. I like it. That's clever. Alright, what do we got? Ooh, food. Continue. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Part one. Maybe I need to turn those lines down after all. They're quite they're quite strong, aren't they? Part one. This sort of would make it easier to read. The terminal. Carlton Victoria. Australia, 3053. Whoa, 3053? A thousand years in the future? Excerpt from online reviews. Pretty unremarkable coffee. Parista speaks Chinese, but exclusively uses it to mock people to their faces. I'm very self-conscious about my top hat now. Observed little girl running around cafe with knife, unsupervised. Came down with deep sense of ennui after visiting. Was rudely told to stop being a big dweebus after complaining about burnt tasting coffee. The coffee's some of the best I've ever had. Five stars. Disclosure, I have no taste buds. <laughs> the door closes. Maddie sighed and began cleaning a glass. She glanced up at the person who just walked in. But he didn't seem quite ready to approach the counter. Hey! Mate! You're right. Uh, you... You can see me? Yeah. Clear as day. You gonna order something? I... Uh... I've been walking around for hours. I can click on that. Maybe it just felt like hours. It can be hard to judge time when you're wandering around aimlessly. Nobody was listening to me. I don't know how I ended up here. I think you'll find it was the front door. He chuckled nervously and took a deep breath. Right. Uh... Where am I? This clearly dearly departed is the terminal. Carlton's finest. Departed? They say our coffee's to die for. So, uh... I don't really know how to go about this. Ask me anything, man. It's not like you're the first disheveled and disoriented dead dude to drop in. This guy looks, has the look of someone who's been through a lot. Hmm. What does everyone else ask? Oh, they generally start with that one. Ah, shit. They always say that. <laughs> then there's that embarrassed silence. Maddie's normally one to enjoy peace and quiet, but some silences are just awkward. Many, in fact. When there are people around, anyway. Alright, alright. I get it. You always just mean to everyone who comes through? Or just the pitiful ones like me? Just the pitiful ones. I guess that's consistent. Always felt like people saw me as the, a pitiful guy. Nah, I'm just kidding. No, I promise, you're right. I'm a fucking sad sack. 
I didn't even know how I died. But I bet it was pitiful and meaningless. Just like everything else about me. I'm... I'm never gonna have a chance to make things better for myself. I'm stuck like this. Come on. And now I'm sitting in a cafe for dead people falling apart in front of the barista. Pull yourself together, my dude. He blinked. And slowly came back to earth. No breakdowns in the cafe, please. I promise, man. You are okay. I know how it is. Uh, are you... No. But I've had a hundred people like you walk through the door. So I'm just averagely messy. No dress code here, but you're still welcome to feel self-conscious about your appearance. <laughs> That's not very nice. Can't even do that right. Keyshan, you have 24 hours left on this plane until you have to move on to the next place. And I don't think you want to spend them having one big long extended panic attack. 24 hours? Ah, shit. What I'm saying is, uh, everything's okay. Just take some deep breaths. We'll sort this out. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't want to be a fuss. It's not like I have anything else to be doing. Don't worry about it. Are you sure? I'm kind of a burden. You're not. Shut up, mate. Let me tell you about this place. It's pretty cool. So I first wandered in here about four years ago. And that's how long you got before you got to move on. 24 hours. 24 hours to find out who killed you. That'd probably be a good detective movie, right? Some mysteries are left forever unsolved. Race against time? I guess. But what's the point if you have to move on, move onwards at the end anyway? Kind of strips it of meaning. I don't even know if you'd care once you're in the next place. I don't know. Maybe I'm too much of a nihilist to be anything but a constant buzzkill. Yeah, I guess the pressure sounds like a lot. Honestly, I'm still wrapping my head around all this. Seems a bit outlandish, doesn't it? Hmm. That's the word. I guess it'd be disappointing if you found out you just died quietly in your sleep or something, though. Yeah. Most people don't die from being murdered. It's mostly sickness. Or old age. Or lawnmower accidents. <laughs> well, they call them accidents. But really, loads of lawnmowers are possessed by evil spirits. That said... Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. You can't just drop that like it's, like it's nothing. Possessed lawnmowers? Seriously? Anything with spinning blades tend to attract them. Garden equipment, garbage disposals, blenders. People scoff at the idea of a robot uprising like we haven't spent decades arming our machines with blades. They're a right pain in the ass. Got to exercise the blender at least once a month. <laughs> That's wild. You'd know working as a barista, wouldn't you? So, I don't know if it's weird to ask, but is everyone in here dead? Yeah. You said that this was a cafe for dead people. Does that mean it's everyone? Or are some of the people just really into ghost cafes? That might be an oversimplification. Not everyone in here is dead, but this is one of the only stopping points between here and there. So we get a lot of your type. That's also why the rent is so high. Landlords, the original rent seekers. Because those vampires who own the place know we get a lot of foot traffic. Literal vampires? No. Just baby boomers with lots of money. Ah. Same thing, I guess. So to answer your question, there are nine customers in here right now. Out of those nine, yourself included, I'd say four or five of them are just passing through on their way to the next place. How can you tell? Once you've worked there for a while, you get a sort of sixth sense for this kind of thing. Gotcha. Speaking of sixth senses, I got one for trouble. You have two sixth senses? I guess there's a sixth sense and a seventh sense? Ah, coffee. Keeps me going. Hello, Ashley. Ashley was a young girl who adopted Maddie and Shay a couple of years back. Much in the same way that a puppy adopts a squeaky toy, she was ferociously smart and a budding genius, but still a kid nonetheless. Today she smelled strongly of motor oil. Her right arm was coated with it. Maddie knew she'd have to help 
if you clean off, clean off it off the joint later. And she wore a look on her face that said, I'm an invincible genius. And she's fancied herself as genius ever since the day that Maddie invited her to become a spunky sidekick. She was mostly right about that one. And Maddie hated it. Alright, I know that look. Spit it out. What? I don't know what you're talking about. Cut the crap, kid. What do you need this time? I'm dealing with a customer here. Uh, I'm not really needing any attention. I'm dealing with a customer. I need someone to hold a joint for me while I screw something in. Don't you have any clamps? We got a bunch for your birthday last month. Aging a year just means you're one year closer to death. An odd thing to celebrate. You're all being used for other very important things. They were not. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I saw one upstairs about 10 minutes ago. I need a helper. Ashley, I'm busy. Please. Hey, I could probably... Please. <laughs> I could... Ashley, you've got to let us work. We're not going to get anything done if we have to keep going upstairs to old screwdrivers and confiscate steak knives. Trying to improvise a screwdriver is a good way to end up with stripped screws. He's the right tool for the job. Uh, Ashley's pout was legendary, but over time, Maddie had grown immune to it. Hey, no dice. Ugh. What about Shay? He can help me. Ugh. He's in the kitchen, emptying the dishwasher. Uh, you know, the dishwasher that you meant to empty an hour ago? Oh, heh. <laughs> it's really no trouble. Hey, why don't I take this guy? He doesn't have anything to do. He's dead. H hey, come on. Ashley, I don't have the energy to argue with you. I'm sure he just wants to relax. Dying takes a lot out of you. Also, manners. God, we've talked about this. You've got to be more respectful in front of the customers. Please. I'm happy to go upstairs. Really, it's fine. I don't have anything better to do. And I'm super dead. <laughs> I'm cool with it. That's me, Keyshawn. Very dead guy. You sure? I can just send it back upstairs. Promise, it's fine. I'd just sit around and be a pain otherwise. Perfect. Come, peon. And follow a hierarchy, peon is a one level low, below assistant. One level above minion. Really? I don't know. I think I'd rather be a minion. We've got work to do. Deep down, Maddie knew that she wasn't giving Ashley enough attention, and that was causing her to act out. She felt guilty as hell about it, but at the same time, she didn't think she'd be able to solve that particular problem anytime soon. For both their sakes, she had to work on keeping the cafe afloat, even if that meant that Ashley would be required to deal with stuff on her own for a little while. And she knew she was being callous. You can only scar someone so many times before they start to form calluses. Her internal monologue was doing a very good job of whispering cruel nothings to her in, in quiet moments, but even then, she had to truly wonder if there wasn't... You know, I reckon this place just needs more plants. God damn it, Shay. Don't sneak up on me like that, you old bastard. It's only mine, Maddie. Ugh. I was drifting off. Do I look like I was thinking weighty thoughts? Extremely. It's nothing important. Just my resting bitch face. Nah. It's different this time. How so? Right now your expression reminds me of that time you challenged that samurai cosplayer to a fistfight. Cosplay is short for costume play and bad things happen when play suddenly becomes serious business. Oh. You mean the one who barged in, waved his gift store katana around and demanded satisfaction after I told him I wouldn't put 15 shots in his coffee? That's a weirdly specific facial expression to refer to. What's it look like? The natural reaction of someone who's been threatened with a thousand-fold nippon steel. You don't have to reenact it. The memory's precious enough that I can picture it clearly. A sort of deep disgust. People with a high disgust sensitivity seldom do well in, ki in a kitchen environment. Somehow, Maddie manages. Mixed with a tinge of pity and just a touch of derision. Ha! <laughs> it me. What a mood. You alright? Real talk. I'm fine. This is an I'm actually fine fine? Or more of a I'm having trouble processing and or expressing my feelings and would like to like the conversation to move in a different direction fine. The latter. Pharaoh. Office still open if you'd like to talk things out. 
In the meantime, sorry. Can I grab that tea towel? My hands are wet. Oh, yeah, there you go. So, did you just feel like doing the dishes by hand, or... I could have sworn I told Ashley to empty the dishwasher earlier. Nah, it's busted. Door latch broke, so we have to get someone to fix it. I don't want to make Ashley wash them by hand anyway. Her arm would get rusty. So I did it. No problem. Makes sense. So anyway, we're going to have to organise a repair. Some people remain stubbornly defiant in the face of planned obsolescence. Replacements of quitters. <laughs> Unless you want to let Ashley give it a shot. I'd make the call myself, but our landline stopped working last week. We have a landline? Yes. Ancient technology. Yeah, a thousand years in the future, I don't even have a fucking landline. <laughs> we could transmit sound through a physical cable. An elegant tool for a more civilized age. Only works when you pay the phone bill, though. I don't know if it'd be cheaper to get it repaired, but just to buy a new one and give Ashley the old one for parts. The costs are pretty close, all things considered. <sighs> hey, don't stress. You worry yourself into an early grave. Hey, you spend 50 years digging holes. If you want to see a lot of earth, you can become a globetrotter, or you can pick up a shovel. Can't talk shit about me and digging myself an early grave, can you, old guy? Ow, old guy. Have you know, I'm barely, uh, 170-ish. Where's the lie? I was in the middle of, the, of a gold rush. Everyone and his dog was busy digging holes. The only thing different about me is that I eventually started digging up things more interesting than gold. <laughs> Didn't dig up any mobile phones though, did you? Could have gotten yourself a head start on learning how to work them. <laughs> hey, so... Hmm? I know you're a bit stressed right now, but I think we need to put in an order for more kitchenware soon. Ugh. I know, I know. It's another thing that costs money. We're beginning to run out of cutlery, though. Summary of Offences Act 1988, Section 11C. A person must not, without reasonable excuse, proof of which lies on the person, have in his or her custody a knife in a public place or a school. It keeps disappearing to somewhere. So I don't know how long it can wait before we get some more. Maybe that robot's eating them. <laughs> Ugh. I don't know if we can afford that this month. Just, you know, everything's a bit too pricey right now. Doesn't help that the coffee cartels keep pushing prices up. I don't think the importer two suburbs over is part of a cartel. They seem quite nice. You ever spoken to them? They're obviously criminals with the rates they charge. The worst kinds of criminals are the ones who operate within the bounds of legality. <laughs> That's true. Wholesale my ass. And yet we keep buying from them. Well, yeah. The beans are good, man. It's just everything else on top of them that's stressing me out. I thought they said that the coffee was average, at best. Uh, yes. I'll happily accept the blame for some of that. It's fine. You don't have to. I know it's all on me. I've just got to figure out how to pay everything off. Everything? And everyone. Ugh. The time debt we owe to the Council of Death is the absolute last thing I want to think about right now. I've lost enough sleep over it already. Hey, I'm here to help. I'm worried about you, you know. You've had a lot of responsibility dropped on you in a very short period of time. Maddie's been saddled with great responsibility. She's still waiting for the great power that's supposed to come with it. And I can't help but feel a little bit culpable for that. I know, yeah, I know, and you, I can't thank you enough. Shh, it's alright. Hold yourself together. We'll figure it out, just like we always do. I just don't want to deal with it, you know? I get it. And I don't want you to feel like I'm imposing or interfering too much. I know the cafe's yours now, and even though things are a little bit much at the moment, I know I keep saying this, Maddie, but... I don't know how much time we have to deal with all of this before things start falling apart. Things are already falling apart. Regardless, you're going to have to face reality at some point. Oh my god, I know. I don't need any more reminders from you. Back off, man. The council's always sitting at the back of my mind. I'm doing my best over here. My best is all I can do, okay? Just because you're my best friend, and my old boss, and my mentor, doesn't mean I need you preaching at me about how I need to deal with my problems. Because they're my problems now. Not yours. Alright. No worries. 
I'll give you some space. I might just go check on Ashley. You seen her recently? She's upstairs. Dragged a customer up there. Talked about clamps or something. I better go rescue them then. Be back in a bit. God damn it, he's right. We do need more plants in here, don't we? <laughs> so we're gonna strap a big old steak knife to it and make them fight each other. I love it. This is gonna be great. I wanna build something that gets put on that TV show, Row Battle Royale, with flamethrowers on it. Uh, you're not gonna put one on this little guy, are you? A flamethrower? Probably not. But I want you to record the fight on my phone so we can send it to the producers. Producers have a real thirst for schlock. Yeah, sure thing. Let's get this knife attached. <laughs> Pass me those zip ties. Zip ties and the knife. Knife and my coffee. Are you sure? Who, gave, who even gave you that? Coffee. Damn it. It's empty. My coffee's empty, Kishan. The world is beginning to vibrate. Maybe it's good that your cup runneth empty, yeah? I think my cup need to runneth with more espresso in it. I just... How many shots did you put in there? Too many, Kishan. But did anyone ask Icarus how many shots of espresso he had? Yeah, I'm reading a book about Icarus. Imagine being Daedalus and watching your son die, doing the exact thing you told him not to do. He flew to the sun. I'm cultured. In unrelated news, I have a headache. He didn't survive the, fl the flying to the sun, though. Uh, I think you might want to read a little bit more about Icarus. There's a twist ending to that one. I'm holding a knife, Kishan. No spoilers. There. No spoilers. Promise. Don't worry, dude. You're already dead. Alright, I'll just say hi. Maybe she won't sling a knife at me this turn. Who knows? <clears throat> hey, kids. Ah! Intruder. <laughs> Keyshan, my buddy. My pal. Did I get him? No. Uh, you missed. Damn it. But, wait. You threw it on purpose? Extremely on purpose, yes. I'm fine, by the way. Oh, it's just you. Would it have been worse if it was someone else? Probably. <laughs> Unless they were an actual spy come to steal my robot designs. You never know who might be watching. Then it would have been good. I think I'm crashing. Oh no. Uh, is she okay? Did I kill her? She'll wake up in about 15 minutes with no ill effects. Ah, uh, you probably shouldn't give her any more coffee. It looks like the knife is in your eye. She turns into a real goblin. Not to be confused with the days when she's just a regular gremlin. Oh. She told me that it'd make her immeasurably powerful. I mean, she's not wrong. But you know, great power, great responsibility, yada yada yada. She's 13. Kid's got plenty of energy already. Maybe not the sense of responsibility, though. Yeah, I didn't even know how I ended up sitting here attaching knives to robots. She's very convincing. Ashley's persuasiveness is a mystery. It clearly can't be logic, eloquence, or charisma that cause people to do her bidding. Whoa, rough. You have to tell me, mate. She basically lives here. Her parents would kill me if they found out she nearly killed me. Pretty good blind throw, though. She makes me proud in the weirdest ways. Huh. Did she learn from the best? <laughs> she did. But the best definitely wasn't me. Maddie's pretty deadly with knives. Loves her flashy tricks. Bad habit, probably. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm being very rude. My name's Shay. I used to own this place. Now I just sort of sit around and cause trouble and sometimes have knives thrown at me, I guess. I'm Keyshard. And I died today. Well, that seems like a bloody good time to wrap this episode up. We're at half an hour as well. After the robot dance, obviously. Or is it a battle? I'm alive. I'm alive. Oh, we got a loud one here. Oh, be nice. You know it's scary waking up. Big light's coming toward me. I think it's reliving its last moments. Looks like it. What is happening? Hello. I do not remember having this many limbs. Join the club, pal. We are reborn a new image. I see. I'm Kepler. Nice to meet you. And I'm Jacoby. 
I am undefined. <laughs> You're a milk bottle, man. I don't know if that name will stick. Its body is made of a milk carton. Should we just call it milk? No, too basic. Imagine if you called me Goon just because I'm made of a Goon box. I wouldn't put it like that at all. Are you seriously going to use an expression, a term like Goon? Only Australians would pick that or even know what that means. It's a wine cask. Ashley is yelling about someone called Lovelace the other day. It's a good one, I think. How does our new friend feel about it? Acceptable? Excellent. Nice to meet you, Lovelace. What is going on? <laughs> A goon box. Bloody hell. Alright, we're gonna wrap this one up here and we'll do this certain words call out to you thing in the next one. I'm pretty invested so far. It's an interesting uh, premise and it's bloody pretty, you gotta admit. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me and I'll see you in the next one.